Hey guys, uh, my name is Sanjiv Kawa and this is a short demonstration about the implementation and functionality of rootkits. Let's start by introducing the concept of a rootkit. Uh, the term root is to have the, uh, have the highest access privilege. Um, so this would be comparable to the system administrator on a uh, Windows machine. And simply put, a rootkit just installs unauthorized and undesired collections of programs in order to gain and maintain root access on a system whilst hiding all processes and evidence of their existence. So uh, let's identify the two operating systems that we're using today. Uh, this is Backtrack 5, which is a Linux distribution with a massive collection of uh, security-based tools. Um, in the right hands, this is a great forensic uh, and penetration testing security tool for any professional to have. And on the other hand, it can also be a powerful, destructive hacker's tool um, so in this uh, in this scenario, we're going to be using this as the, as the attacker's machine. Um, this will be our victim's machine. It's just a Windows XP distribution, which is fresh. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and run two rootkit uh, revealing type um, programs. The first is rootkit revealer. It's part of Microsoft's uh, forensic toolkit called Sys Internals, um, and this will. Uh, well, SysInternals just doesn't only handle rootkits, it can find any malwares or any discrepancies with processes and things like that on a system. It's just used to analyze um, any sort of vectors uh, based on security and general system awareness for a user. So it does scan and no discrepancies are found. And just to double check, we'll use um, FSecure's Blacklight. And this is... Um, created by uh, F-Secure and F-Secure actually makes that same rootkit that we're going to be using today which is called FU rootkits. So this is going to do a quick scan and it's going to know that there's no rootkits hide hiding. So I guess let's get into it. Um, the first thing we're going to do is really examine how a hacker will gain access to a, a computer. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use an nmap scan to identify all vulnerable nodes or any nodes that we will want to attack on the system. So we're going to use the current subnet range that of the network that we are on. So we'll say we only want to scan for um, 20 nodes, 140. Um, Whereas in a, in a probable scenario, you scan the entire network from 1 to 255. Now what T5 is, is the throughput that's going to be going through on the network. Um, T0 is the lowest, T5 is the highest, and there's a whole bunch of numbers in between. Um, if there's a Wireshark sniffer or some sort of packet sniffer on the network, you want to use a lower one, so there's not many SYN requests going across to hit ports. Uh, o is just to identify the operating system so we can actually see it and it's legible. Um, so it's found one node, which is ours, the Linux distribution that we're using, Backtrack. And it's found another, which is 136, and it's the XP box. And these are the open ports that we will be attacking in order to gain access to the XP machine. So 136. Um, what we're going to use to actually gain access to that machine is a tool um, native to Backtrack, which is called... Uh, fast track. That's located here. Just do a quick clear. I should probably explain what fast track is. Um, what it does is it will run an MAP scan on that one machine that we've selected. It can run it on a whole um, bunch of machines, but we're not going to run the entire network because it would just take a lot of time. Um, and once it's identified that machine and all of its open ports, it's going to throw every single exploit available in the local database using a brute force algorithm in order to exploit those ports and create a session so we can gain access to that machine. So let's actually quickly go back up and figure out what the IP was again of that Windows machine. 136. So what's going to happen here is that MMAP scan I was talking about 
as well as um, the whole exploitation process, which can be quite lengthy. So I'm just going to pause this for now, and we'll come back in a minute. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, if you guys are curious, that process took about five minutes uh, of throwing 459 different types of exploits at those five or six different open ports. Um, so what we're going to do now is we've got two sessions. Uh, we're going to identify them, first of all. <clears throat> So these are the session numbers one and three. Um, these were actual exploits that were found, uh, well, vulnerabilities that are found that we've exploited to gain session um, and access into that system. Uh, so we're going to actually interact with all those sessions. We'll use three. And this should now um, give us access. I'll actually access out of this session and jump into session one. So, as you can see, we have now gained access to the Windows system. And this should be a listing of the entire C directory. So documents and settings and program files, what have you. Um, I guess the next step we can do is upload the rootkit and upload the um, Trojan horse we'll be using, which is called Beast. Load it into the C directory. We do another ls. We can see that now the rootkit has been added onto the victim system as well as the uh, Trojan horse, neither of which have been executed yet. I should give a brief explanation on what uh, Beast actually is. So it's a Trojan horse that will be used as a launch point on the XP machine in order to infect other nodes on the network. So we're going to let the XP machine do the work for us. Um, Beast will allow the hacker to gain access to all files on those other nodes, including passwords, the registry, and even the webcam to actually get a screenshot of the potential victim. Uh, why you would do that, I'm not sure. So let's uh, execute um, Beast. East. Oh, I've spelled it wrong. There we go. So it's created it. And now if we look at the process list, we can see that Beast is a running process amongst all the other helper processes that help run Windows. Um, what we want to accomplish now is actually hiding that Trojan horse um, from the user. So when they look at their process list, the Trojan horse isn't there on the process list, but it's still on the running task uh, list. This will even trick the intelligent user, as they will not be able to identify that they have an extra process running um, using the typical methods, which we'll get to soon. Um, so I guess right now what we're going to do is move into the shell which is the actual command prompt of uh, the XP machine that we're going to be, the well, one that we've hacked. Um, so I guess we've run into an issue here. Uh, the XP machine doesn't have a unzip utility such as tar on the Unix or Linux uh, platforms. So what we can actually do to overcome this obstacle is use either WinRAR or 7-zip to unzip it for us because uh, they actually have command line based interactions. Um, so we can go into the 7-zip directory and from there we can execute the 7-zip executable and yep it will allow us to extract the file. So uh, x and the path of where or if you underscore rootkit is and this will actually just put it into um, the program files directory so we want to move that back into C just for so we know where it is to 
to C backslash. Sweet. So let's move into the fu rootkit directory and then into the executable section of that. And if we have a look, we see that we can now access the fu executable. So let's do that, but we're not actually going to fully execute it yet. We're going to have a look at the list of the processes. We'll say we'll have a look at 40 of them so we can actually see a decent amount. So these are all the processes that are running on the system, and we can see that Beast is there. So we want to actually hide Beast, um, which is the whole purpose of the rootkit, to hide the running processes that you do not want the user to see. Um, so I believe the process hide, yep, uh, 68, which is the PID, the process ID of Beast. So if we look at the process list again, items, we should now see that Beast no longer exists. So we've now installed the Trojan horse and we've hidden it from the running task list. I guess what we can do now is play the role of the victim. Um, if a victim suspects that there is a, uh, a rootkit or any devious processes on their system, I guess the first intelligent thing to do was is to have a look in the processes. And that's really not going to get us too far because a rootkit's actually hidden that process. So as we can see, Beast is not there. So the next thing we can do is use sysinternals as a diagnostic to see if there are actually any rootkits. So this has found two registry keys. Um, these registry keys could pertain to the rootkit, however they haven't been really helpful in identifying the process for us, uh, which the rootkit is hiding. But these have definitely been written into the into the registry by the rootkit. So let's use um, Blacklight by fsecure to try and hopefully identify what process the rootkit is hiding. So let's start the scan. And if you recall last time, it did not find anything, as well as rootkit revealer, part of sysinternals, did not find anything. But I guess in this instance, it did. So if we have a look at the task list, organize it by name, oh, I guess you can. But there we go. We can see that, that one of the hidden processes is beast. Um, now this should uh, be able to clean it and hopefully remove it. And uh, it has done so. I guess another part of this demonstration would be to explore the Trojan horse a little bit, but that really just runs out of the scope of what a rootkit does. And we have identified that today. The rootkit was able to hide the process. Um, and without the correct tools, you were not able to find that process and quarantine it. Uh, if we actually even go into the C directory, we should be able to see that those files were left behind by the hacker. But if they were conscious, they would be remove that before um, you would go snooping around. So there we have it, guys. That's um, that's my presentation on the rootkits, and that concludes the demonstration. I can now take any and all questions that you have.